Chemical Kinetics 3, presented by G. Satyarananagav, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Dr. B. R. R. Government College, Chennai. In this lesson, we discuss about order and molecularity of chemical reactions, the differences between order and molecularity, and also we see about the kinetics of zero order chemical reactions. Before discussing about the molecularity, let us say what is meaning of elementary reaction and mechanism of reaction. Elementary reaction means the reaction which takes place only in single step. Means the reactants will directly convert into products. The reactants will directly convert into products without any intermediate steps. The type of reactions are called elementary reactions. So it is only one step reaction that is elementary reaction. But in chemistry, most of the reactions are complex reactions. Means the reactions which involves many elementary reactions in them. They are called as what? Complex reactions. So complex reactions uh, will contain many elementary reactions. Each elementary, in each elementary reaction, the reactant is directly converted into products. If we represent all these elementary reactions of a reaction in a sequential, in a sequence order, represent that is representation of sequential arrangement of elementary reactions involving in a given reaction, that is called reaction mechanism. So, what is the reaction mechanism? It is sequential representation or sequential arrangement of elementary reactions which are present in a complex reaction that is called elementary reaction. So, in order to understand the concept, let me discuss, let me see this simple example where the reaction is given A gives D. It is a complex reaction. Now, this complex reaction follows these elementary reactions. This it is in, including these elementary reactions. Step 1 is A gives B. Step 2, 2B two gives C. Step 3, C gives D. So, A gives B, 2B gives C, C gives D. Finally, we got the product. Finally, we got the product. If we compare the speed of these uh, steps, Speed of, speeds of each elementary reaction, there will be a one reaction which takes place slow compared to the remaining. Because here the reactants are different, that is why the speeds of the substance uh, the reaction reactions are also different. According to our representation, the second step is a slow step which takes place slowly compared to remaining two. Now the speed of overall reaction, that is rate of overall reaction, depends on the second step. As soon as all this step completes, so the reaction also completes soon. So the slowest step among the elementary reactions is called rate determination step. Rate determination step. Or we say it is a rate limiting step. Rate determination step or rate limiting step. So the rate of overall reaction depends on this rate determination step. Like the sequential representation of elementary reactions of a chemical reaction is called mechanism of reaction. In these elementary steps, each elementary step or reaction will have its own molecularity. It will have its own molecularity. So, what is meaning of molecularity? Molecularity is nothing but it is a number of reacting spaces, means the number of atoms or number of molecules or number of ions, that is number of species, reacting spaces. The number of reacting spaces which undergo simultaneous collision to bring out the chemical reaction 
he is called molecularity. What is molecularity? Molecularity is the number of reactant species that undergo simultaneous collisions to bring out a chemical reaction is called molecularity. The molecularity is determined for elementary reactions. The molecularity of overall reaction is meaningless. Saying molecularity for overall reaction, it is meaningless. We cannot express. We express the molecularity of elementary reactions. Let us see the examples for molecularity. And also see about what is molecularity and order. So molecularity as we said, the number of molecules of reactants involved in an elementary reaction is called molecularity. Okay. Next, uh, for example, this is a equation given that is hydrolysis of alkyl halides. The hydrolysis of alkyl halide in this C2H5Cl is undergoing hydrolysis to give C2H5OH and HCl. In this, we say it is molecularity 2. Why? Because in this elementary reaction, in this elementary reaction, it takes two reactants are participating. One is uh, ethyl chloride, second is water. That's why the molecularity is 2. Okay, so for the reactants, uh, reactions, the rate is related to the concentrations of the reactants. Means, uh, we know clearly what is molecularity. Molecularity is nothing but number, number of reactant molecules involved in an elementary reaction. That is called molecularity. Let us see about the meaning of order. What is order of reaction? We will arrive the rate law according to law of mass action based on experimental evidences. For example, for a given chemical reaction, the rate law is expressed uh, like this. Is rate is equal to the rate is equal to K into A concentration power M into B concentration power N. This is the rate law for a given reaction. How the rate law is determined? The rate law is determined based on experiments. This rate law gives a relationship between rate of reaction and concentration terms of the reaction. Here, if you see the sum of powers of A concentration and B concentration, it is equal to M plus N. Now, this M plus N is called as order of reaction. M plus N is called order of reaction. Okay, so order of reaction means it is sum of powers of concentration terms in rate equation. What is meaning of order of reaction? It is sum of powers of concentration terms in rate equation. If the rate equation is equal to K into concentration of A power M into B power N, we say M plus N is the order of reaction. So how can we define the order of reaction now? It is the sum of powers of concentration terms in rate equation. It is called order of reaction. And you remember the order of reaction may be 0 or fractional or an integer. It may be 0 or fractional or integer. Is it? So order can have the values of 0, fractional or integer. But what about molecularity? Molecularity cannot be 0 or fractional. Because molecularity is number of molecules reacting in an elementary reaction. So if you are saying molecularity zero means there are no reactants, is it? It is meaningless. So molecularity cannot be zero or cannot be fractional. Means half of the molecule, three by fourth of the molecule, it, they will not exist. It is meaningless. So molecularity will have the only the integer value. It is always an integer. It cannot be zero or fractional. So Order can be zero, order can be fractional or integer, but molecularity cannot be zero or cannot be fractional, but it is always integer. That you have to remember. How the order of reaction is determined with help of rate law. How the rate law is arrived? Experimental evidences or an experimental study of a chemical reaction. We are studying the rate of reaction with the concentration chain. That there we arrive the rate law. Based on that, we write the rate equation. In the trade equation, sum of powers is called order. How to determine the molecularity with the help of reaction mechanism? 
reaction mechanism contains many elementary steps. Each elementary step will have its own molecularity. So molecularity cannot be zero or fractional, but order can be zero or fractional or integer. Let's you see these examples. The molecularity, the maximum value of molecularity can be only three. Means the value of molecularity may be one or two or three. We said it is not equal to zero, okay. But it cannot be four. The molecularity is equal to three. The type of reactions are very rare. Why it is? Because according to collision theory of reaction rates, the molecules has to approach each other with proper orientations to collide with each other. Then only they will form the products. So, three molecules approaching together in proper orientation, that will be very difficult compared to the two reactant molecules approaching in proper orientation. Now, we see about four. What about four? It is not possible to approach each other with proper orientation to collide with what? Four molecules, four reactant molecules. That's why it cannot be equal to four. So, molecularity value will be one or two or three. If molecularity is 1, we say it is unimolecular reaction or monomolecular reaction. You can see the example for monomolecular reaction or unimolecular reaction. Conversion of isocyanide into cyanide. CH3 and C use CH3 Cl. Next, if the molecularity is 2, we say it is bimolecular reaction. Decomposition of hydrogen iodide into hydrogen and iodine. Bimolecular reaction. It is an example for bimolecular reaction. Third molecular reaction means where the three molecules will involve the chemical elementary step. Third molecular reaction. So, example is 2CO plus O2 gives 2CO2. That is the example. So, events are more than three species come together in a right configuration and react to them. React or are extremely unlike T and do not play a role. The order of reaction can be integer or non-integer. So, monomolecular reactions, bimolecular reactions, termolecular reactions. So, molecularity may be equal to 1 or 2 or 3. It cannot be more than 3. It is not possible. Right. Next, you see this reaction. Decomposition of n 2 is a complex reaction. N2O5 decomposition generally we represent like this NO2 plus O2. Is it? N2O5 gives, so it gives a nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Maybe two, here two moles of nitrogen dioxide is required, right? Now, this complex reaction involving this following steps means mechanism of this reaction is represented below. First step decomposition of nitrogen pentoxide to give nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen trioxide. Second step, this nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen trioxide combine together to form nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Third step is nitric oxide and nitro, uh, nitrogen trioxide combine together to form nitrogen dioxide. So, these are the elementary reactions. Among these, the second step is taking place slowly. It is slow step. Means, the second step is rate determination step that we can identify. So, each of these elementary reactions will have their own molecularity, their own molecularity. So, what about the first one, first step, molecularity is 2. Why? Because two molecules are participating. What is the molecular of the second? Again, 2. What about the molecular of third elementary step? Again, it is 2. Is it? So, these are the steps involving in chemical reaction that is the decomposition of N2O5. So, if you add all these 1 plus 2 plus 3, we will get the final equation. 2 N2O5 gives 4 NO2 plus O2. This is the main reaction, complex reaction, which in all these following represented elementary steps. Each step is having its own molecularity. And among them, second is the slow step. So, we say the second is the rate determination step. Next, you see this example. 
again we are coming to the order of reaction how the order is determined so a rate of reaction is arrived like this how it will be arrived by studying the relation between the concentration terms and rate if uh, a, in a given reaction if a concentration is doubled the rate of reaction becomes four times it is doubled four times that's why a power 2 we write and doubling the concentration of b doubles the, doubling the concentration of d the rate of reaction you see doubling the concentration of reactant a doubles the rate okay doubles the rate so doubling the concentration of doubling the concentration of reactant a the rate of reaction becomes four times right next now if you doubling the concentration of reactant b doubles the rate of reaction at constant it should be b so if the b is doubled the rate also becomes doubled at constant temperature at constant temperature so if a concentration is doubled rate is becoming double uh, rate is becoming four times b concentration is double rate is becoming double so from this what we understand the rate law should be rate is equal to k into a power 2 into b concentration and also we have discussed this in the earlier lesson that is k does not depends on concentration of reactants it depends only on temperature means the uh, order of reaction is determined experimentally by studying the change in rate with change in concentration of reactants now we see in these experiments means where we dis, uh, decide or determine the order how we determine the order with respect to the variation in the change variation of concentration of reactants with what uh, and their effect on rate how it is means when you are changing the concentration of reactant how the rate of reaction is changing based on that how can we decide the order suppose if it is a zero order reaction now the zero order reaction is represented like this rate is equal to k into a concentration power zero so in this case if you increase the concentration of this a by any times by any number of times double triple four, four times five times hundred times what is the power zero something power zero is equal to one means means here by changing the concentration of a by changing the concentration of a you see there will be no change in the rate rate remain constant rate remain constant so change in concentration of reactant what we say it is it may be the double or any change you bring there will be no change in the rate of reaction the type of reactions are called zero order so if you are changing the concentration of reactant but there is no change in the rate at a given temperature immediately we assign that that is a zero order reaction okay so what is the representation how can we represent the zero order reaction rate is equal to k into a power zero next you see about the first order reaction how we represent the first order reaction rate is equal to k into concentration of a power one if you double the concentration of a rate also become two times triple and three times so when you double the concentration of a it also doubles n times if you increase it also in one triple the concentration of a three times rate will increase n times if you increase the concentration of a n times the rate will increase if you see the type of trend the type of relation between the change in concentration and rate then we say it is the first order reaction means experimentally we will observe this the relation between the rate and change in concentrations experimentally we have to observe next you see about the second order reaction how can we represent rate is equal to k into concentration of a power 2 if you double the concentration of a rate becomes the four times because it is 2 power 2 if you triple the concentration of a rate becomes 9 times because it is 3 power 2 9 if you increase the concentration of a by n times rate will increases n square times if you observe this type of relation then we say the given particular reaction is second order reaction similarly third order if you increase the concentration of 
reactant by n times how many times the rate of reaction increases n power 3 times like this by changing the concentration of reactants by changing the concentration of reactants we are observing the change in rate of reaction so that uh, based on that we arrive we arrive rate loss so rate loss cannot be determined directly they will be arrived like this by observing the relation between the rate and change in concentration we arrive the rate law based on this rate law we decide the order so order is the sum of powers of concentration terms in rate equation we set like that we decide the order of reaction okay next to see this uh, units what are the units of rate constant rate constant is also called specific rate we said that order may have the zero value fractional value or integer value for nth order let you consider the rate equation the rate equation for nth order is given here what is the uh, rate equation for nth order rate is equal to k into concentration of a power n what is the power of concentration term n so order is n now we want to determine the units of k so we are writing equation for k what is k k is equal to rate divided by upon rate upon a concentration power n you know the units of rate of reaction yes it is mole liter inverse second inverse what are the units of rate mole liter inverse second inverse divided by it is the concentration term a concentration what are the what are the units of concentration mole per liter power n okay so if you write uh, if you write in proper way that is rearranging this how can we get this is k is equal to mole power minus of n minus 1 liter power n minus 1 second power minus 1 second power means it is a time inverse so mole power minus of n minus 1 liter power n minus 1 second power minus 1 what is n n is order of reaction so by simply substituting the value of n in this last equation just by simply substituting the value of n in that now you can you can write the units of rate constant so what are the units of k for nth order k is equal to mole power minus of n minus 1 and liter power n minus 1 second power minus 1 and we see the units of different uh, orders for zero order what you are substituting here you see you are substituting the value of n as zero mole liter inverse second inverse we get mole liter inverse second inverse is nothing but it is the units of rate means the units of zero order rate constant is nothing but the units of rate the rate of the reaction and units of k of zero order reaction will have the same units both of them are same that is mole liter inverse and second inverse next you see the units of first order simply you substitute n is equal to 1 here also you substitute n is equal to 1 so 1 minus 1 becomes 0 this part becomes 0 this part becomes 0 something power 0 is 1 so simply only one term is remained what is that second power minus 1 that is time inverse so in case of first order reaction rate constant units is time inverse it is second inverse in case of second order reaction let you see again you are substituting n is equal to 2 in this case so minus of 2 minus 1 means minus 1 mole power minus 1 2 minus 1 liter power 2 minus 1 liter power 1 second power minus 1 or mole inverse liter second inverse mole inverse liter second inverse it is a second order similarly third order by substituting the value of n is equal to 3 mole power minus 2 liter square second power minus 1 okay so like this by substituting the value of n in this representation you can calculate the units of rate constant so what we understand from this uh, discussion means rate constant of reaction depends on that is units of rate constant of reaction depends on 
order of reaction. It does not depend on any other factor. The units of rate constant of any reaction depends on its order. Okay. So K is equal to mole power minus half N minus 1, liter power N minus 1 and second power minus 1. They are the units of rate constant. Now here one problem. How to find the order of reaction? A is given A concentration and B concentration, mole per liter it is given, rate of, rate of that reaction is also given. A and B are the reactants. If A is 1.5 M, B is 1.0, then the rate of reaction is 3 into 10 power minus 5. Now, by keeping the concentration of B constant, you see, there is no change in the concentration of B, but the concentration of A is doubled. If the concentration of A is doubled, what happens? The rate, can you say? 3 into 10 power minus 5, 1.2 into 10 power minus 4. What is this 1.2 into 10 power minus 4? You can write it as 12 into 10 power minus 5. So 3 into 10 power minus 5 is converting into 12 into 10 power minus 5. Means the rate is increasing by 4 times. If you are increasing the concentration of A by 2 times. So if you are increasing the concentration of A by 2 times, the rate is increasing by 4 times. Have you identified the order? Yes, it is second order means here the power of A should be equal to, instead of this M, we can write what? 2. We can write 2. Okay. Now you have to decide the order of reaction with respect to B. You have to decide the order of reaction with respect to T. What is the power of A? We got it is 2. Let's see. Let you compare set uh, 1 and set uh, 3. Because in set 1 and set 3, the concentration of A remain constant and whereas the concentration of B is doubled. When the concentration of B is doubled, you see the rate of reaction is also becomes doubled. By keeping the concentration of A constant, if you are increasing the concentration of B by 2 times, rate of reaction is also becoming 2 times. 2 times, 2 times, 3 times, 3 times. What we said, it is first order means the value of n is 1. What is the value of m we obtained? It is 2. We say order with respect to a is 2 and order with respect to b is 1. So what is the overall order? Your question is what are the values of m? Yes, you have identified now. m is equal to 2. n is equal to 1. What is the overall order of reaction? m plus n means it is 2 plus 1. It will be 3. It is third order reaction. Like this, you can identify the order of reaction by observing the change in concentrations and the change in rate of reaction experimentally. Next, you see what are the differences between order and molecularity. This very, very important uh, concept is it. What are the differences between order and molecularity? What is meaning of order? The basic definition let you see. It is sum of powers of concentration terms in rate equation. What is molecularity again? It is the number of reactant molecules that participate in a elementary reaction. How the order is determined? The order is determined experiment by experimental methods. Whereas molecularity of reaction will be up arrived from reaction mechanism. The order of reaction is determined experimentally, whereas molecularity is determined from reaction mechanism. Next. What would be the values of order? The value of order may be the value of order may be 0 or fractional or integers. The value of order may be 0 or fractional or integer. But what about the molecularity? It cannot can be have only the integer value, it cannot be 0 or fractional. We discussed this. What is the third one? It is simply we are writing the definitions. Sum of powers of concentration terms in rate equation is called order. Whereas molecularity, the number of reactant space is colliding simultaneously to bring out a chemical reaction. What is the fourth one? Changing experimental condition may change the order. But molecularity, it is invariant with change in experimental conditions. Molecularity cannot be changed with by changing the experimental condition, but order can be changed. That the differences between order and molecularity okay next 
let me discuss about the kinetics of different orders. That is zero order reaction. What is zero order reaction? The reaction in which the rate of reaction is independent of concentration term. That is called zero order reaction. How can you express it? So rate is equal to here k into a power zero. A power zero is one. That's why we get rate is equal to k. So if a is a reactant, how can you write it? Minus d of a divided by dt is equal to k. This is the rate equation in case of zero order reaction. So rate of that reaction is always constant value. Means by changing the concentration, the rate will not change. It remain constant. What are the examples for zero order reactions? Decomposition of hydrogen, iodine on surface of gold and combination of hydrogen and bromine on surface of water in a closed container, decomposition of ammonia on surface of platinum, etc. These follows the zero order reaction. They will not be, the rate of these reactions will not change with change in concentrations. Let me derive the expression for rate constant of zero order reaction. Means we will derive the equation for K. How can you represent the rate uh, equation for zero order reaction? It is minus d of A divided by dt is equal to K. For example, x concentration is, here some mistake is, x concentration is changing into products. Some x concentration is, then K is converting into products, is it? So, x concentration is changing, x concentration of A is changing into products in time t. Then what happens? Let me see it. So, in that case, we write dx by dt is equal to k into, after time t, what we say? k into the remaining concentration will be a minus x. You remember, small a represent, small a represent initial concentration of reactant. x represent the amount of reactant converted into products. So, in the beginning, the concentration of reactant is a. After t time, now x is converted into, in the t time, x is converted into products. So, the remaining concentration of reactant is a minus x at time t. So, at time t, if you see the rate of reaction, it will be dx by dt is equal to k into a minus x power to 0. So, in order to calculate k, we have to integrate this equation. So, we are arranging in proper way that is a concentration term is dx. So, integral of dx is equal to k into integral of dt. k into integral of dt because a power 0, a, a minus x power 0 is 1 again. So, k into integral of dt means dx is equal to k into dt we get. It. dx is equal to k into dt from this. Now, we are integrating integral of a to a minus x dx is equal to k into integral of dt. When the time of the reaction is 0, means in the beginning, when the time of reaction is 0, means in the beginning, what is the concentration of reactant? It is a. When the time of reaction reach to t, how much reactant is remained? a minus x. So, these are the limits of integration. Integral of a to a minus x dx is equal to k into integral of 0 to t to dt. So, integral of dx is nothing but it is x. So, applying the limits from a minus x minus of x, a, a minus x minus of a. That is uh, here before that uh, we have to write what it is minus. You will get x, x is equal to kt or k is equal to x by t we get. So, x is equal to kt or k is equal to x by t k is equal to x by t is equation for rate constant of zero order reaction. What is k? Rate constant of zero order reaction. x is the amount of reactant converted into products in time t. So, this is the equation for rate constant of zero order reaction. Next, you see half-life of zero order reaction. What is the meaning of half-life? Half-life means the time required to convert the initial concentration of reactant to half of its value or the time required to convert the existing concentration of reactant to half of its value is called half-life. You know the 
rate constant of zero order reaction is given by k is equal to x by t. Let me derive the expression for half life of zero order reaction. So, k is given as x by t. x is the amount of reactant consumed the reaction in time t. Now, here we substitute when t becomes equal to t half, means in the one half life, what happened? The initial concentration A becomes to A by 2. Because A by 2 will consume in the reaction, A by 2 will remain in half, one half life. So, we write K is equal to X by T. Let you substitute X is equal to A by 2. And T is equal to T half. We get K is equal to A by 2. That is A by 2 divided by T half. Or T half will be equal to A by 2 K. T of is equal to A by 2 K we get. I mean T of is directly proportional to A. A is the concentration of reactant. So A is the concentration of reactant means greater the concentration of reactant in zero order, greater will be the half life. It is directly proportional. In case of zero order reaction, greater the concentration of reactant, greater will be the half life. That we can observe in the zero order reaction. Is it clear? K is equal to X by T. When t becomes equal to t of x becomes a by 2. You substitute this a by 2 and uh, t of in this equation and uh, you can calculate, uh, you can arrive the equation for t of, it will be equal to a by 2k. So, the relation between half life and concentration will be directly proportional. t of is directly proportional to a, means greater the concentration of reactant, greater will be the half life that we observe in the zero order reaction. Let me see your graphs of zero order reaction. So, how the rate of reaction changes with time? The rate of reaction will remain constant with time, no change. It remains constant with time. So, it is gives a graph of between graph between what rate of reaction and time. Next, what about the relation between x and t? X is amount of reactant consumed in the reaction for time t. Means as the time proceeds, the amount of reactant consumed also increases. Because we know the reaction equation, what is that equation? K is equal to x by t, y is equal to mx form we can arrange. So, x versus t. What about t of? t of is directly proportional to concentration of reactant. So, as the concentration of reactant increases, t of also increases. So, these are the graphs we can observe in case of zero order reaction which already we have discussed there. Let me see. Next, uh, you see this problem, a simple problem, how the half-life and uh, concentrations are related. In this given problem, half-life of zero order reaction for 0 0.1 m concentration of reactant is 25 minutes. Calculate the half-life for 0 0.3 m concentration of the reactant in the same reaction, that is at 298 Kelvin. So, it is zero order reaction. What is the concentration initially? It is 0 0.1 m. So, half life was 25 minutes. Now, the concentration is 0 0.3 m. If you increase the concentration, what will be the half life? In the zero order reaction, the relation between the half life and concentration of reactant is directly proportional. Based on that, we can write T1. T1 is the half life of in first case, T2 is half life in second case. A1 is the concentration, initial concentration in the first case. A2 is the initial concentration in second case. So, they are directly proportional. That's why it is, we write T1 by T2 is equal to A1 by A2. Now, we substitute the half-life is 25 minutes when the concentration is 0 0.1. T2 had to find out the concentration becomes 0 0.3. Means, T2 becomes equal to how much it will be? 75. Means when the concentration is increasing to three times, so half life also increases three times. That we can observe clearly in this reaction. Like that we can solve T1 by T2 is equal to A1 by A2. Simply you substitute the three terms. You know T1, A1, and A2 and calculate for T2. Okay. So the, like this, we solve the problems on zero order reaction. Right. Thank you.